This is where I'd be thinking if I were Malik Murphy. Now they tighten up the formation, bring him in closer. Star Thomas is flanking at running back. Third and goal. Murphy to the end zone. Incomplete. He was looking for Hagens. It was a low throw in front of Richard. And I, I. To cut it to a one point margin. And he does just that. 32 to 31. And Manny Diaz, his return here to South Florida. You know, it's interesting. We were just talking in the commercial break. And as the squib kick is fielded, and it does so with Lofton with a good return. Elijah Lofton, who had the touchdown run moments ago, the true freshman playing special teams, gets that return for Miami. And now sets them up in great field position. And Joe, referencing what you said a second ago, we've seen how well Miami's been able to finish games this year. They, they make a lot of really good adjustments at halftime. They've been... Here's Martinez, doesn't find much. Miami back on offense, and that means that Xavier Restrepo, who's been sensational today with two touchdowns, could make history. You think about all, second and eight. Downfield in stride, he's got George! Touchdown, Canes! Zombie land celebration for good. Abs of games, you saw it right there. Bora Gallus adds the extra point. Don't blink when Cam Ward's on the field. It only took them 49 seconds to respond. Just test. Jacoby George was so upset with himself on the sidelines after dropping the ball in the end zone. And goes ahead for eight hard-earned yards. That's a tremendous job because Reuben Bain had that thing sealed off. And you see Thomas just be able to put his foot in the ground and, and get upfield. Murphy on third and five. That is denied. Pass defended by Richard. He was looking for Pankle. Jadis Richard was sitting on that hitch route. He was waiting for it. As soon as this ball came out, he attacked. He's got his eyes in the backfield. It was the first three and out since the first quarter. This is a line drive knuckle for Ray Ray Joseph to return. As he was tackled by the snapper, Curtis Cooper from Huntsville, Alabama. Reminder, this is just the start to an exciting day here on ABC. Action coming your way from Jacksonville. A much improved Florida team going up against number two Georgia. The SEC on ABC. Trevor Etienne, former Gator, now the starting running back for Georgia. This is going to be personal for him. There he is. Personal also, I think, for Florida's defense that has gotten a lot better, Joe, yeah. the last three games out. They've been a lot more physical. This one's going to be a lot of fun. We got Georgia today. They've got Texas next week. But they're that kind of team at this stage of the season. They can get somebody. We'll see if it happens coming up on ABC. Cam Ward takes his time and gets it complete to Brown. And Sam Brown, what a move for extra yardage past midfield. He turned the... Would argue much the other way from top to bottom. They're talented out there, but this guy is super. And that is incomplete. But the Xavier Restrepo, if he had caught that, would have had both records in Miami history. And that would have been an unbelievably crazy catch because he's trying to go. His friend. Reynoldson to punt away. And it goes far out of bounds to the right. So Duke got the interception, but they didn't do anything with that opportunity. College football rankings are brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Going to be a lot of changes coming up here, obviously, with Penn State and Ohio State facing off today. Remember, Clemson's down here right now, and they're sitting at number 11. That could be a matchup later with Miami and the ACC. Maybe Texas and Texas A&M are going to play each other in the regular season. This is going to change. This picture is very fluid, but I'm excited, Joe, for Tuesday night, the initial college football playoff rankings. First rankings reveal will be Tuesday night. Reese and the guys will give us all the analysis how will it all play out for Miami and everything down the stretch here in the ACC? Mark Fletcher gets the carry. Reminder, that is coming your way Tuesday.
Live interview with the committee chairman, Ward Manuel, the Michigan AD. That's 7 Eastern on ESPN, also available on the app. Gamboard through the interception crossbody moments ago. Your analysis, I think, dead on. We've seen it this year. He's so talented. He's so confident in what he can do. He pushes the extremes, and sometimes it costs him. On the other side, four touchdown passes and another Miami lead. And stuff like that, here goes Restrepo. Welcome to the record books. You're number one. Of all the greats who have ever played here, nobody with more yards or catches at the receiver position. As you see, is that Jaime, Mom Ashley celebrating. Nobody with more than Xavier Restrepo, and what a way to do it. 46 to third. Remarkable personal story as well. This offense just never stops, does it, Jess? It doesn't, and their RPO game's as good as I've seen this year. This is just a slam, but because Cam Ward gets it to him so quickly, he's able to split these two safeties. I mean, watch this. After the fake, it's out right now, and you get it to him fast, and it gives him an opportunity to get up field and find his running pass. So many times with quarterbacks in the RPO game, you got to catch the snap. Vinny Testaverde and Bernie Kozar and Jim Kelly. That is intercepted as my Janus Richard comes up with the pick. Richard slow to get up. Eli Procol is just running a spot route. And when you throw over the middle. ACC championship if they can stay the course. Sam Brown, he's not done either. Reaching out, and where will they spot him? Just short. Miami is knocking on the door to go over the 50 spot. And again, I, I, I know I keep saying it, turning to shortstop, but look what happens when Cam Ward gets this thing out as fast as he does. Look how much room he has after he makes the catch. He's able to, to get his head turned around, find the offensive lineman, downfield blocking, and go make something happen. It changes the dynamics of the RPO game completely. You've seen that now in the last two drives. High formation with Mark Fletcher as the featured back here. Fletcher straight ahead and Fletcher into the end zone. Points to the sky. Last week, his father, Mark Sr., passed away. He played on against Florida State. This week, as you see his family here in the crowd cheering him on, the coaching staff, his teammates joined him in the services to celebrate the life of his father, Mark Sr. Malik Murphy, he is pressured but able to get it complete out to the 39-yard line as he's able to connect with Higgins. That is not a good sign for Miami. Jadis Richard, we hope the best for him. He had the interception moments ago, and now it's being taken off in a car. And they've had injury problems already in the secondary for Miami. Remember their starting corner, Damari Brown, got hurt week one against Florida. So if they lose Richard, that's not good news. Murphy able to spin free. And then gets it complete, but immediately tackled was Higgins, and you can see the effect of that as he was driven back by Patterson, the true freshman safety. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Those were, those were two pretty talented teams going back and forth. Oh, ball is out. And it is picked up by Miami. Another turnover here as Cam Pruitt the true freshman linebacker with the fun this one away explosive fourth quarter from the canes as jordan lyle will get some time at running back a very good looking true freshman from st thomas aquinas not far away from the stadium and yeah, going back to what i was saying earlier the question mark with, with miami secondary joy I, I really do think that's a that's a big thing it is you know that was a big question mark coming into this year they had to replace four or five starters and knowing what you're going to get on the field. If things stay the course, say Miami goes on ACC championship, they're going to be in the Peach Bowl, playing a team that would have won their way in, probably a really good
good SEC kind of team. Yeah. I think it's fascinating because I know they can put points up against well, right. anybody. They're going to win or lose, but it's going to be 40 something. 40 That's right. Something. You're going to have arena football ball going crazy. Scoreboard lighting up as we see every single week with this offense. Under three and a half to play. Third down, Ward downfield again. What a catch that time by Riley Williams. Williams is working one on one against the safety Terry Moore. And with a 22 point lead with three minutes to go, Miami's still taking shots deep down the field. Cam Ward sees the matchup he likes to the set. Ball is out, and Duke recovers at the 10 yard line. Okay. Uh, I think now if you're Mario Cristobal, yes. you take Cam Ward out of the game. Please. Yeah, and we don't need to be throwing the ball anymore up 22, down with less than three minutes to go. We just talked about what this team might look like in the college football playoff. It doesn't matter if number one's not, not playing quarterback. So, Terry Moore coming in on him. Yeah, so let's just let's just close the game out now. Well, Duke played in this game. I mean, they were in control going in at halftime, and they fought back after a tough loss a week ago. Look at their schedule coming up, Joe, at NC State, Virginia Tech, and at Wake Forest. All very winnable games. I'll tell you, Duke could end up with nine wins, maybe ten. Nine wins would be the second nine-win season in three years. Still lots to play for for the Blue Devils. A lot of people still wondering how they didn't get a win last week and maybe would have been ranked coming into this game. Six turnovers against SMU. Peyton Jones takes it out of bounds. First down Duke. And for Miami now, you know, offensively, you've got things rolling. It's been that way each and every single week. It's going to be interesting to see what the defensive backfield lineup looks like moving forward now with some guys getting a bit more banged up. That's a unit and that's a group on the back end of this defense that I think is going to be the determining factor of just how far this Miami team can go. Murphy comes back on the receiver screen to Robertson. It was a record-breaking day for Xavier Restrepo. Eight catches, 146 yards. Number one all-time now in receptions and in receiving yards in Miami. Thank <laughs> you.